Well, good morning, everyone. I think we're going to start. Uh, we have a number of people on already, and I'm sure folks will be jumping on. We're recording this session, so uh, anybody who uh, needs to review any of the material covered here will have that opportunity. My name is Tom Quinlan. I'm the director of the St. Joseph Educational Center in West Des Moines, Iowa, and I get the joy of serving the 24 parishes in the Des Moines region or deanery within the Diocese of Des Moines. Uh, I am joined by the wonderful team that's assembled to uh, provide this uh, Zoom part two session for you today. Uh, and we'll go through uh, the team from Saints John and Paul uh, very briefly. Um, we will try to provide time for questions and answers uh, at the back end of the session. So maybe jot down things that you wanna talk about. Uh, you're welcome to use the chat as well. Uh, and we'll do our best to navigate through your questions. Our goal here today is to pick up where we left off last time uh, for ses from session one in July and move us forward uh, more deeply into the logistics, the, the hows and, and wheres uh, for, for uh, implementing this program and making sure your needs are met so you can make some informed decisions about how you'd like to uh, utilize the program to what extent um, or simply to learn more about family and intergenerational modeling uh, for your use uh, in your parish. So uh, we hope that this session meets your needs. Uh, please um, uh, let us know uh, remaining questions that you have after the session by emailing Paulette or myself, but we're hopeful that this session will go a long ways. Let me give you just a brief overview of where we have been leading up to this moment. And by the way, I want to say welcome not only to all of us gathered here in the Des Moines Diocese, but those watching the recording in the coming weeks. Uh, this is early August, and I'm sure we'll have folks from the Des Moines Diocese, and we'll also have people from across the nation watching this recording. So uh, we're delighted that you're with us uh, wherever you are, whenever you're watching it. So this is uh, session number two. Uh, our first one in mid-July was an effort to give an overview of what we're trying to do, this collaborative effort between the St. Joseph Educational Center and uh, the beautiful parish in Altoona, Iowa, St. John and Paul. We came this spring to a recognition that there might be a need for us to deliver faith formation this year digitally. And unfortunately, nothing in our current health crisis situation leads us to think that um, uh, gathering will be easy this year. So what we decided to do was to take the family and intergenerational model that has been used at St. John and Paul for the last 17 years with great uh, efficacy. Uh, it's a beautiful ministry that's done uh, uh, beautiful things in the lives of families and parishioners in the eastern part of Des Moines, Altoona, and, and surrounding suburbs for nearly 20 years that we would take that model and continue it, but we would migrate it into a digital model. So that's the learning curve for the folks at St. John and Paul. They know how to do family and intergeneration brilliantly. So we're all on this learning curve with regard to the digital. The St. Joe Center factors in as, um, with its mission of uh, adult faith formation and evangelization, I and the center will be providing uh, the adult formation uh, video components. In particular, two things monthly, uh, a gospel reflection for the month uh, provided by me. That'll be in the neighborhood of 10 minutes, uh, designed for parents to, and, and other adults, but parents to help uh, unpack the gospel, uh, gospel uh, trajectory for that month with their children. And so that families can be talking about uh, the lectionary readings for those weeks. The other component provided by the St. Joe Center is the uh, adult formation element, which will be in the uh, neighborhood of 15 minutes, and that will have different national voices uh, that we'll bring into the mix. So St. Joe's will provide some of the adult formation. St. John and Paul will be providing their, their brilliant expertise in how to do family intergenerational, uh, and they've got the platform there to do it digitally. So, that's the overview, and now, having explained uh, a lot of the, uh, the basics last month, 
we're going to go further into how does this program work? How would uh, parents in your uh, uh, parish experience it? How would your families experience it? And then how would you as a leader uh, work the program? And once again, uh, this is free for you to use in any way you like. You can use all of it or components. You can um, jump in at the start. You could jump in anywhere during the course of the year if you're in need of a backup plan. So uh, that's an overview. I'd like to invite us now to um, shift from the logistical to the uh, reflective mode. We can do that, right? And take a moment to um, consider the moment that we're in. There is a gravity, there is a heaviness to our lives, uh, indeed to our nation these days. Uh, we have people dying every hour of a terrible virus that has stricken the world. We are in the middle of a health crisis and it has changed so much of what we know to be normal. And we're all asking the question, what will normal ever look like again? This is where we place our trust in, G in Jesus. Fear locks us in. And no doubt each and every one of us has experienced anxiety, which is a vague fear, and fear of very specific things, including getting COVID-19 or loved ones, parents, people who are at risk, experiencing the, the, the uh, upset of folks getting sick. Uh, and indeed, the grief possibly of knowing people who have, have lost their lives to this virus. And of course, in the midst of this, there are all the other struggles and uh, challenges of life that continue for us. We, the question of whether we're going to be able to send children to school. And for us as catechetical leaders, whether we can deliver a quality experience for folks this year in our faith formation programs. So. I have no doubt that a lot of things are weighing on your heart as they are on mine. And Jesus comes to offer us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which frees us. Fear locks us in, and the Spirit comes to, to unlock doors, just like at Pentecost. There is the possibility that we will feel paralyzed this year, and there's nothing we can do. I have even heard of a parish programs um, saying at this point that there will be no program this year, that we're simply closed for business. I don't concur with that. I, I believe we need to be more open than ever to be doing the business of the gospel, proclaiming the good news of Jesus, and helping people to unlock uh, themselves from, from the fear that COVID and life in general uh, subjects us to. So, the Holy Spirit is very, very key here. And if we could all invite the Spirit into our lives and invite the person of Jesus personally into our lives, um, we can break free, break through and break out and be beacons of light and peace and hope for our parishioners, for our neighbors, our friends and our family. We are called to be light and hope where there is darkness and fear. So I'm going to do something that's sort of Taizé-like for our prayer. Very simple. Sometimes we think complicated is better. I think simple is better in prayer. I'm going to offer you the wording from something that's called the Surrender Novena. And I have fallen in love with this Novena uh, devotion uh, with my wife, Christy. Um, and it's very simple. The wording is, oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you take care of everything. And I have learned it's a very easy prayer to say, and it's a very difficult prayer to mean. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Do I? Can I? Take care of everything. Can I hand it over and trust that God's got this? That's a great challenge. So I'm going to invite us, and it's difficult when we're, we're digitally together to pray because of the lag of sound and all that. So do the best you can to pray with me aloud or silently five times this very simple refrain, oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you, take care of everything. And from the first to the fifth, perhaps we can grow in our intentionality and in our sense of actually meaning it. 
it's just like with the Our Father, thy will be done. Who really prays the Our Father and means it? We want our will to be done, not God's. In truth, we need to get to a place where we mean thy will be done. So again, oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Let's take just a brief moment to gather ourselves internally to invite the Spirit and invite Jesus into our being. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Thank you for praying as a community with me, uh, this simple prayer. Um, and I believe this is the spiritual posture that this time is calling us to. A, a, a time where we surrender our fears to God and let God lead our lives and to transform the world. All the good we're trying to do here with this program won't amount to anything without the power of the Holy Spirit transforming it into grace. God's grace and our cooperation can change the world. So let's talk more about how we're hoping that God can change the world here in the Des Moines Diocese and perhaps around the country through this effort. And so at this point, I'd like to invite Father Tim Fitzgerald, the wonderful pastor of Saints John and Paul in Altoona, Iowa, uh, and a great leader of not only the parish broadly, but uh, a visionary for faith formation to uh, speak to us. Thanks, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, with that prayer, I'm reminded of the, um, <clears throat> the gospel passage this morning on this uh, feast of the, of the transfiguration. Um, the disciples who are prostrate with their fears, the gospel says, and, and Jesus touches them and says, arise, that the resurrection verb, be raised up and do not be afraid. And I think um, there, there's the, those words are meant for us I, in 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 the in these days, our fears and anxieties that are nearly paralyzing us. And 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 Christ says to us, "Be raised up." So I think this is really um, um, this crisis moment for us is really a moment of opportunity and a moment of transformation uh, for us. Um, what, what looks like a calamity is really um, grace cleverly disguised. Um, it's an opportunity for us, an opportunity uh, for us to really transform faith formation in our parishes. And um, um, we in the parish here, I think we have, we have an advantage in that we have been we have been um, striving with that for uh, nearly 18 years now. Um, a family-centered, a household approach to faith formation rather than a child-centered approach to faith formation. And um, in some ways, that's, that's what is behind this uh, format that, that we are um, presenting and we invite other parishes to utilize it it doesn't this transformation will not happen uh, quickly or automatically and and I think everybody needs to be clear-eyed about that um, our, our parish has been working at this this parish has been working with this for 
going on 18 years now, and we're making good progress, but, but it's slow and it's demanding. But the opportunity, the grace in disguise here is that um, this is a format, as I've said before, that's really built upon the church's call for lifelong growth in faith for all members of the parish community. Um, those are not our words. Those are the church's words to all of us. And um, we find that this intergenerational model really uh, helps form parents as the primary mentors in faith, rather than uh, everybody, including us, saying, well, the parish is the primary mentor in faith. In fact, this is built on the premise that the parents and the household are the primary mentors in faith for the younger members of the parish community. Um, it offers an opportunity for growth in faith for all Catholics. And um, I think that's, uh, that's a new chapter for um, faith formation in, in a lot of parishes. Um, faith formation for all members of the community, lifelong growth in faith. And that's really our premise. You know, we, we keep saying that here over and over again. Um, growth in faith is a task for all of us, young and old alike, not simply for grade school children or for uh, teens up through confirmation, but rather a lifelong growth in faith. And as um, the, uh, the National Catechetical Directory and the later document, Our Hearts Were Burning Within Us, has continued to say, Adult growth in faith is to be the priority to be considered above all else in, in parish faith formation. And I think that's, there's the kernel, if you will, that the spirit in this crisis moment is, is pointing us to. Um, we need to try out some new models um, where, th where this is front and center, adult growth in faith. Um, not the only focus, uh, certainly, um, but the central focus. And uh, we think this, this model of intergenerational faith formation really takes that seriously and coaches and supports and promotes the uh, adults and the parents as, um, uh, as, um, uh, as the primary mentors in faith. And uh, Thanks for the note from uh, Cheryl, who says the new um, uh, catechetical director from the Vatican reiterates that same point. Adult growth and faith is to be considered above all else. This is a moment of opportunity. It's, it's a moment of transfiguration, transformation uh, for us. So I invite people to utilize uh, this model and to and to make use of this format that, that, that we're um, scrambling to, um, to produce and um, uh, a link uh, and working not as we have done for the past 15 years with monthly gatherings of households, but rather working with um, households online. So it's a new venture for us too. It's exciting and scary both. Uh, and, and there we are. And the Lord who says to us, be raised up and do not be afraid. So um, we, we invite you to uh, listen further for more detail and to use this year as an opportunity to try out some new approaches. And Tim, I'll jump in. Thank you so much for those uh, wonderful words. Uh, something we've talked about is our hope that you will find ways to make what we're putting together here uh, as a program, your own. So we really would prefer in an ideal uh, situation, you not just simply cut and paste, uh, that would be okay, we're, we're, we're okay with that, but we don't want this to feel in your parish to be some outsourced thing that's foreign, that's being dropped in from, from Mars or somewhere. Um, so uh, all along as you listen here now to the particulars, be thinking about how you can make this yours and it feel like it's it's you know there's outside material but it's your parish's program that's really what we hope will happen mm -hmm. 
uh, let's hand it off to Paulette Chapman for the next leg of this journey, the wonderful uh, Director of Adult Faith Formation at St. John and Paul. Thanks, Tom. I think before I begin, um, we have some words from one of our parishioners uh, to kind of echo um, what Father Tim has shared with us. So, Jenny, do we have that? Hi, my name is Joella Latham, and this is my daughter, Isabella. And we want to talk to you a little bit about faith formation. Uh, we, we really like faith formation because it deepens our prayer life. Uh, it helps us go deeper into ideas from the Bible and think about ways to apply them in our real life. Um, it, it's nice to have those conversations with the church community and to be able to hear other thoughts and other perspectives. And we really like going as a family uh, on the drive home. We can always talk about the things that we did separately and the things that we did together. So those are the parts of faith formation that we like the most. And the food. So thank you to Joellen and Isabel for sharing a little bit about their experience um, of faith formation in our parish. Um, unfortunately, um, Isabel won't be able to enjoy the food this year because we won't be able to gather in person and begin with a meal as we usually do. But we look forward to the day when we can return to that important part of the program. But for this year with our online approach, um, we wanted to, as Tom said in his introductory remarks, take a little deeper dive into um, what we're working on and preparing for this year. And so one thing um, that we thought would be helpful would be to just kind of look at what one month of this would look like, at least for our parish. Um, in our intergenerational model, when we gathered in person, that was a monthly gathering, um, much longer in length than a typical Wednesday night um, session, including the meal um, and several other components. And so we, um, with our virtual uh, approach, will begin a month with an in-person um, gathering on Zoom that will be recorded for those who can't join live. Uh, in our parish, we have our session on Sunday night and we repeat the same session on Wednesday night uh, because our numbers are so great that we can't gather everybody together. Plus, it gives families some flexibility with their schedules to choose Sunday or Wednesday, whichever works best for them. So we will have those sessions on Sunday and Wednesday night to kick off the month. Um, we will point in those sessions, we will point them to our website, Kitchen Table Faith, which will provide the menu of choices for them for their household to explore for the rest of the month to expand upon what we do, uh, what we begin, the conversations that we begin on those Sunday and Wednesday nights but also to pull in components such as connections to the liturgical year and so forth. And Jenny is going to um, sort that out for us here shortly um, and, and help us to understand what that looks like. The following week, we anticipate um, sending a group text to the households just to check in and say, you know, remember to get on Kitchen Table Faith if you haven't already and choose some items for your household to explore this month. Um, paying attention also to those things that we're asking everybody to do. And then week three, another check-in text where we will encourage them to complete the parish connection for the month. And these might flip-flop from month to month. We might encourage the parish connection week two and you know, um, have another message of affirmation or encouragement week three. We wanna keep it, we wanna keep mixing it up and keep it fresh for people. But we will check in um, the parish connection is the activity, the action item, if you will, that we will ask all households who are participating in this to complete. So it might be um, create a prayer space in your home, take a picture of it and send it to us and we will create a slideshow. It might be shoot a short video of your family um, talking about what you're thankful for, maybe in November, and then we would create a video from that. It might be something along the lines of um, create a Jesse tree ornament and bring that in December to hang on our parish Jesse tree if we're indeed gathering in person. So um, those will vary from month to month, but it will be a point of connection 
and interaction with each other and with the parish uh, that will be an important part of this and will also indicate to us folks engagement with it. And then also that third week, um, I plan to utilize the video that will be produced through the St. Joseph Educational Center with the national speaker that is, if you will, the guest speaker for the adult component of this um, in a Zoom session with our adults in our households. So we'll watch the video together on Zoom and then we'll have a conversation about it. I also anticipate using that as an opportunity to check in with those adults and particularly parents to say, how's it going with this approach? Um, you know, how's it working with your household? What do you need from us? Uh, what's working in your household? What's a great success that you've had that you can share with other parents while we're on Zoom together? And so again, providing some interaction with the parish among the adults uh, to enhance that adult faith formation, but also to provide some, some pastoral care in this very difficult time and an opportunity for them to share how they're feeling, how they're doing, and support one another um, as we journey through this year together. And then finally, the fourth week of the month, will be gearing up for the next cycle. And so in our parish on the Thursday preceding our, what would have been our gatherings, we email through constant contact an invitation to all households, um, which is essentially, it serves as a reminder. Uh, for in-person gatherings, one important item that was included in that invitation was the menu so that people could plan, you know, if that's not something their kids like, maybe they were, you know, would eat before they come or whatever. Um, we won't have a menu to share, but what we will share um, in this invitation would be anything that we need households to prepare to engage in that session on Sunday or Wednesday night. So for instance, in September, we are going to have a little activity for the families to do. And when we send the invitation, we are going to attach a two page handout that they can print in preparation for sitting down Sunday or Wednesday night to engage with us. We also um, have structured that activity so that if they forget to print it or they can't find it, they can just use paper and pencil to engage with it. Uh, but that's just an example. Uh, we may encourage them in subsequent months, remember to get your prayer space together so that when we have our opening prayer, you have your focal point. Uh, so that will be an opportunity to give them any directions, simple directions that they need to prepare for that live session. So that's what a month would look like. And now we'd like to point you to a couple of components that we'll be sharing to help make, to, that will make it happen in our parish and that might be helpful for you. So I am going to show you, oh, and it's not showing up. Okay, hang on a second. Um, let's try that again. I want to show you what, the, what uh, the script will look like for this. We develop a very detailed script every month, here we go, um, that guides our in-person sessions. And so we will also for these virtual sessions develop a detailed script. And so this is a draft of the September script um, we always include um, for the session. Um, we have a member of our core team who goes through and highlights and, and puts in um, the connections to the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the scripture connections. And then um, we launch into a really minute by minute um, format of what we'll be doing, who will be doing what. Um, as you can see here, we have indicated to the right which portions of these Sunday and Wednesday nights will be pre-recorded and which will be live. A little housekeeping, a little video that we're uh, developing to share with our parishioners the progress with our construction of our new parish hall. Um, Father Tim sets the context for the session each time um, to kind of give a little preview of what we'll be talking about, but also situates it within the context of the whole year. Um, the, you know, the theme for the year, as well as in the context of our lives, and especially this year with what is happening in our lives. That opening activity, sorry about that, that I um, indicated that we'll um, provide, and then we will have an opening prayer that will be um, somewhat interactive with microphones muted so that it's not too chaotic. 
Um, we have a guest speaker who we're working with, um, and that video will be pre-recorded and will be able to be shared if you would like to use that portion for, for your parish in any way that you can. Um, we'll spend more time in this first month introducing the Kitchen Table Faith uh, because that's new. While we have had a website for faith formation um, for many years, uh, this is will be expanded. It will be a different format um, and a different look. And so uh, there will be different expectations than we have had with the website before. And so we'll need to spend some time with that in September. We'll come back to it each month, but we won't need to spend quite as much time with it. Um, we're working on another little video that we might have um, announcements, you know, um, we don't have those in yet because we're five weeks out. We'll see what we need to remind people of, um, our closing prayer and conclusion. So that's just a real um, quick overview of what the script would look like and or will look like. Um, and that is something that we will be sharing if that would be helpful to you folks. Now, um, if we can get back to the PowerPoint, um, we did record Father Tim setting the context portion, and we took a little clip from that to share with you. Um, so as we get that queued up here, um, just a little idea of what that looks like. And this is our space that we've um, converted a classroom into a, a, a homemade video production studio for this effort. So this is our first um, piece shot from our studio. To all the world, called to be people of faith, not for our own benefit, but literally for the life of the world. And so that's really the lens for us as we step in to this new season. In this September gathering, we will visit the Acts of the Apostles that contains some wonderful snapshots and information about those first households of Christians the first households of believers, of, of disciples. And we will use the Acts of the Apostles as a lens to cast an eye on our own experience as households of believers and to see the ways that we are similar to those first households of Christians and ways that we are very different from those first households as well. So there's some of the um, some of the focus of this evening session and of all the components of this first. So that's just a little taste um, of that setting the context that that will be part of our um, online sessions on Sunday and Wednesday nights. Now I'm going to turn uh, things over to Jenny, who is going to share about the Kitchen Table Faith website. I have to remember to unmute. Thanks, Paulette. Um, there we go. Too many buttons. So yes, um, we are now, um, we'll share our Kitchen Table Faith website with our playlist, if you will, with some of our monthly faith formation activities. Um, as you can tell from the little man on our screen, it is still under construction, um, but we did want to share it with you so you can have some of those big picture ideas, uh, some of the organi organization of it. Um, and while I wish we had an answer about where we were going to, um, how you can access this information, uh, we're still working out logistics of that on where all of this is going to land for you guys. So. Um, so while, so I guess look for an email next week and we'll let you know um, where you guys can access all, access all that. But for now, I'm going to, oh, is it just gonna let me share now? All right. So can you guys see the website now? Anybody? Paulette, are you guys able to see the website? Yes, Jenny, we can. Okay, I just want to make sure I was on the right screen because it um, flipped back and forth. So um, I will take you to our main page. So um, this will be our main page. We'll have a welcome here and all of that. Then we will get into the September page. So 
Our September menu will start here. We'll have a welcome uh, paragraph, some directions for the families. As Paulette said, this is a new endeavor for us and for our families. So we'll have some more of the directions of what they're supposed to do with this website and how they're gonna interact with it. And then this is the overview page. So each month, as you remember, or if you this is new, uh, there'll be main course offerings. So we'll have the Faith Formation live video. So after our Sunday and Wednesday nights, we'll record those Zoom sessions and we'll post those there. So if you had a sick kid and weren't able to join us that night, you can click on that and be able to watch that. The Adult Faith Formation Lives um, will also be recorded for our parish after they are done and we'll post those there if you wanna go back and listen to them later or view them later. The Sunday Gospel Reflections that uh, Tim will, or Tom will be sharing with us will be posted here for um, parishioners. And then our Parish Connection. Um, so on the main course page, they'll have that Parish Connection that Paulette talked about. Not all of these are live, but part of our side dish page is, so I wanna share that with you. So families will click on our side dish page where we are asking that they choose two or more activities depending on the interest and the age of their kids. Um, so this is kind of their next stop spot. Um, each household is asked to choose two or more. There's different options. And um, we remind them that any household that has a confirmation candidate in it, that they make sure and check the confirmation connection under the team page. So they will be exploring, uh, we'll have the New Testament focus here, household of believers, and then they'll be, uh, they can click on, which it isn't linked yet. So, this page. So I have our families page live. So on our families page this month, um, two of the activities that we have, we'll have a do, um, something for them to do. So we have found a link for uh, Bible tabs. Um, these are fun, print and color your own Bible tabs to create Bibles or tabs for your Bibles. Um, and then there's also a read. We found an article um, that was really nice from Catholic Family, I believe. Um, a table talk article for families that talked about gathering around the table and different things you can do, um, interacting with your kids during, or your families during um, that table or that dinner time at home and making that something special. So that's a little bit of how our website will be set up and how we are going to go through some of those things. There are different ways to do it, but this is kind of how ours will run. So each month there'll be those same um, main menu page with the main menu options on it. There'll be the side dishes page that will have the activities for the different side dishes. And then there'll be the, the dessert page that will have the different um, options for the dessert page. So with that, so now that you know kind of what we're doing, um, Paulette talked about our schedule, what we're doing each month, um, what's on our playlist or how that will look, and how we'll use this at our parish. Um, hopefully, I'm going to switch screens here. And we have created a little brochure because if I were in your guys' uh, seats, I would wanna know, um, we keep talking about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna, and what we're gonna give you, but um, it might be a little confusing of what we're actually getting into. So we created a little handout here um, that I want to share with you. We'll also email this out afterwards for you guys um, that talks about our virtual faith formation. So um, as Tom has talked about, there's many different ways to do this. This is the way we are doing faith formation this year. Um, and these are the things um, off to the left here you can see. So we're asking you to journey with us, learn with us this year as we reimagine faith formation um, can do for the domestic church. We've adapted our parish intergener intergenerational faith formation model to completely virtual this year. And we invite you to use these resources to interact with your parish in a way that'll best serve your members. So off to the left are the, um, are all the components of the faith formation that we will be um, including in our program this month. Um, as Tom said, you pick and choose what works for yours. You add different things. If there's things you're already doing that work well, then add them to your playlist. Um, if some of these things you think that's not going to fly here, then don't add those to your playlist, um, but make this your own. So these are the things. So we just wanted to share with you kind of um, the logistics of the program. So what will we provide? So um, once we have a separate web, we're going to set up a separate website for you guys where we can house all these things, um, archive everything so you can go back and look at it if you don't want to start until November or something. Um, and you want to start with our September session, all those resources will be in one place and we can find them 
So we will archive a monthly playlist there. Our goal is to have it out to you a month ahead of time. Granted, today is already August 6th, so our goal um, is to have that out to you guys early next week so you guys can look through that and pick the things that you would like to include in your playlist for your families for um, September. So you'll have access to all of our online resources. Many, many of them are just links to other things we found in different places. Um, some of the things are things that we have created and will write, but we will include all of those. So we'll include those links. Um, there also um, will be a printed version, um, knowing that some parishes that would be easier for you to have um, it all in one spot. We don't expect you to copy and paste our website, but if you had access to all those links, then you guys could create it or add it to newsletters or add it to bulletins, however you guys would work for you guys to use that. Our script for our Sunday and live session, Sunday and Wednesday live sessions will be posted there. The script that um, Paulette just shared with you. Um, that way you guys can produce those sessions and see the notes we have, but make them your own. The adult faith formation component, um, the videos from the different national ministry leaders will be posted on the website. The video of um, Father Tim setting the context, we are going to record that each month and post that on our website if you would like to use that um, as your program or share that with your priest to create your own. That is a resource that will be uh, available to you. And then also the Sunday Gospel Reflection video that Tom Quinlan will be doing for us will be posted there each month. So um, the big question, what is my responsibility? What, do you, what is your parish's responsibility? What do you guys need to do? So these are the pieces your parish might want to do for faith formation. Um, obviously, this is your own, and please make it that. But some things you might want to consider is uh, the live interaction with your households. Um, while we think our video is really good, and we would love to share that with you, um, video of us looking at our construction site won't be as pertinent to your household. So um, we ask that those, if you choose to do this as a virtual, um, make that interaction and those Zooms um, live with your parishioners, so you have those interactions with your community. Post the playlist on your website or distribute the newsletter um, in the printed format or curate your own. Um, maybe you like two or three of our ideas and you have 10 of your own. Wonderful. Put them in a Word document and send them to everybody. Uh, make a free Weebly page and send them out, whatever works for you guys. Um, there's also the opportunity that we will talk about next to integrate the sacramental preparation program. So uh, first Eucharist and confirmation, integrate those into this model. Um, there's also the, um, the integration of your youth ministry model or the changes that you'll make into this model. Uh, the parish connection, use our ideas but facilitate the interaction with your parish. Um, obviously we might have this month, um, I don't even remember what our parishioners are going to do. Um, oh, one of them is they're going to create a banner with their family name and a word for their family for the year and send us pictures and we'll make a video. Well, you can use our ideas. They need to obviously send the pictures to you and you guys need to make a video to share with your parishioners. And finally, the faith in action. Um, you may decide to use our service learning ideas, but you may also decide um, something that better fits your parish. So those are some things that can be um, personalized to fit your guys' needs and those things that will best work for your parish. Hopefully uh, that handout answers some of your questions. We will email that to anyone um, along with the copy of this recording later. But now uh, Paulette is going to talk a little bit on how we plan to integrate the other components of our faith formation model into our programs. So we're going to go back to PowerPoint. So the intergenerational faith formation program is the, is the centerpiece of faith formation in our parish. And, uh, but it's not all we do for faith formation. And just as with your parishes, your Wednesday night program or, or however that looks, this is the only thing you do. And so we anticipate this coming year that we will try to offer um, as quotes normal of a schedule of activities and opportunities for our, our households as we can under the you know the conditions of the pandemic and also for us our construction which really limits our access to our facilities for many many months and so um, with adult faith formation um, you know we will have an RCIA process of you know we'll, we'll figure that out we are figuring that out um, some of our small face sharing groups have continued 
um, via Zoom or other virtual platforms, and we will continue, you know, to resource them and to invite uh, new people to be part of small faith sharing groups. Uh, I think now uh, more than ever, we need that interaction with one another. We need to find ways to make that happen. And let me pause and just say, all of these pieces, we are, we are, uh, you know, kind of day to day as to whether or not these will be some in-person interactions or virtual interactions. We will pay attention as, as we all have been doing to directives from, um, you know, the health department, from the diocese. Um, there may be some of these activities that involve a small enough group that they actually are able to gather in person safely. While the weather's nice, um, we will, you know, encourage maybe some outdoor gathering of things. And so just as you see these different pieces listed, no, these may be in person, they may be virtual, we don't know right now. And, and it will probably go back and forth throughout the year depending on um, the circumstances. Um, we have offered mornings of reflection a couple of times a year for our adults, and um, we may do that virtually this year. We'll have to see how, how things work. Um, Bible study, and then our Vacation Bible School, we run an adult component alongside the kids component. We were not able to have VBS this year. I hope next summer we are. Um, so that hopefully will return. But anyway, that's, that's something fun that we do in our parish. Then moving on to, I can't, sorry, Jenny. There we go. Okay, so I, I wanted to show um, how youth ministry integrates with the schedule for faith formation um, as we anticipate it this year with our virtual um, offering. So we have, we start youth ministry in third grade. Um, JP Kids started three or four years ago and has, has been a lot of fun for those households with kids that age. And so on a Sunday evening, um, JP Kids and tweens meet in different rooms when they meet virtually, or they'll be on different Zooms, um, or when they meet in person, or they'll be on different Zooms if they need to meet virtually. Uh, but that's the second week of the month. And then um, also the second and fourth week of the month, our junior and senior high youth ministry groups meet. Um, and so we will continue to gather them, whether that's in person, outside, online, you know, we'll again, we'll plan as conditions warrant. And then many people have also asked us about what sacramental formation looks like in this model. And that's another piece we're figuring out in light of the pandemic and adapting, um, you know, our practice to. And so I think we have another slide for that. Um, one of my responsibilities is baptism preparation for parents, and we will continue to offer that quarterly. Uh, starting in March, we've offered it online. Um, and those sessions are for parents who are expecting or parents of children who are not yet of catechetical age. And then we all face those circumstances, a special sacramental formation, um, you know, for older unbaptized children, um, children of our catechumens, catechumens or candidates for full initiation, or children who, um, parents who are seeking sacraments for their children who are older than typical age. And again, um, we will offer that as we can. Those tend to be, um, from year to year, that looks different in our parish. If, it's a, if there are a large number, we might gather them as a group. If it's one household, it may be more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of mentoring situation. Um, and so we'll continue to, you know, to work with that in this, in this time. Many have also asked about uh, sacramental formation for reconciliation and Eucharist. And that is something that has been centered in the home for us for many years. And so actually what we're doing this year will not look terribly different, except that some of what may have been in-person gatherings may turn out to be virtual gatherings. And so again, beginning with a parent-child meeting in October, where we provide them with materials that they work with um, in the home to prepare the child for first reconciliation. Typically at that parent-child meeting, there, a portion of that, the parents and the kids are together. And for a portion of that, we do some adult faith formation with the parents while a catechist or two are with the children uh, doing some activities with them. The parent-child retreat is parents and children together. Um, 
that again, that may end up to be online, that may end up to be something where the parent and child come um, you know, one on one um, and experience something here at the church, but not in the large group. We'll, we'll figure that out. And then typically we celebrate First Reconciliation in December. After Christmas, we have a parent-child meeting very similar to the reconciliation meeting, part of it with parents and children together, part of it with parents and, parents and children separate so we can do some good adult faith formation and then um, present them with their materials with some instruction about how to use those um, and kind of a timetable, suggested timetable for them to complete those. And then the parent-child retreat in March um, will be parents and children together. This past spring, um, a big component of that is a church tour. And this past spring, Jenny set up the church tour as she normally would, but the parents and children came in at uh, different time slots so that they weren't in the church together so they could still do the tour, but they weren't bumping up against a lot of other people. And so there are ways that we'll continue to adapt um, to the current climate. And then we do not we do not celebrate First Eucharist with a large group. Um, we celebrate First Eucharist in the contents in the context of our weekend liturgies, beginning after Easter, um, throughout the Easter season, and some into the summer. Uh, we typically have no more than two or three First Communions at a given Mass, and so it's an opportunity for it to really be a parish celebration. And it also gives families the flexibility to choose a date when grandparents can be there and so forth. What that will look like next spring, we'll have to see what the conditions are, but that, um, that has been our practice. And then confirmation is always another big question. Um, you may have noticed on the menu for Kitchen Table Faith that there's a confirmation connection. There will be um, a video and some activities that the confirmation candidates and their families will be asked to engage in each month as part of their formation for confirmation. We will have some kind of a day of renewal for candidates and sponsors early in the process, um, whether that's in person or online, we shall see. And then the candidates and sponsors are given some material um, that asks them to get together at least four times to work through that material, to work on a discipleship plan that is part of um, what the ninth graders talk about um, in an interview that starts the whole formation process and then to do a service project together. We will have some kind of a retreat after Christmas or in the early spring. Um, and then shortly before confirmation, there's an evening of reflection and a little run through of what to expect with the celebration. So we'll all stay tuned to see what that looks like in the spring, but these are the, the broad strokes of what we intend given um, circumstances. So hopefully that has helped to address some of the questions about uh, sacramental formation and how this you know, works in the big picture of parish life in terms of youth ministry and other faith formation efforts. And so now I am going to turn things back to Tom and Tim um, for their, their comments and clarifications. And then I believe we'll open up for questions. Tim, if you have anything to add, please do. We're at the hour mark. I've got a few uh, things to touch upon, and then we'll uh, open it up for questions. Uh, thanks, uh, Paulette and, and uh, Jenny. Um, I, I would just simply add a word of encouragement. This framework is not meant to be a straitjacket, you know, for households or, or for parish efforts. But, but is really meant to be a flexible framework um, that individual parishes can utilize uh, to, to their benefit and really can insert materials and video clips and suggestions and links um, from, from their own parish. Uh, so it's, it's really meant to be a, a framework that, that any of us and all of us uh, can, can adapt and um, in a sense customize for the individual parish. It's, it's not without um, you know, hazards or risks. I mean, we're, we're fully aware of that uh, as well. Um, but, but I think it, it offers the great advantage of taking the technology seriously and um, a flexible, 
um, method to reach a wide array of households in the parish and to invite all members of the parish into an interactive process. Uh, that's really the, at the center of intergenerational faith. It's, it's really an, a, a means to um, draw adults and teens and, and young kids into an interactive process uh, of listening and praying and, um, and, and growing in faith. So I uh, just encourage everybody uh, to give it a try. So a, f a few uh, disparate comments for me in no particular order. I've not had time to like put it into something coherent here. Um, first of all, I want to ask the question of everybody uh, watching now and, and the recording uh, viewing as well. <clears throat> what remains unclear? Um, send us an email, uh, Des Moines folks, with your thoughts on how we can help clear up uh, things that remain. We're going to have some time for Q&A soon. <clears throat> But as you still find uh, that clarity is a barrier for your being able to get your head around this and, and start to imagine implementing this, we want to find out how we can help you. It may be that we create some sort of visual uh, flow chart or something of these elements. I, I, if I were in your shoes, I'd be working very hard to try to get my head around this. Um, there seem to be a lot of moving parts and it seems to be possibly a, a Rubik's Cube. Do you remember that? And I don't think it has to be that complicated. Um, basically, what we're doing is providing a vision for faith formation and this digital delivery system for this year of pandemic. We're providing a programmatic framework, and then we're providing discrete components, video components and some other resource components that you can uh, draw upon within the framework that we're providing or in some other manner. So it, this isn't rocket science, though it probably still seems rather uh, involved from your perspective. And whatever we can do to help clarify that, we want to produce something that will serve. Uh, helping clarity not be a barrier. Uh, we want uh, you to decide to choose this or not on your terms uh, with full understanding. I wrote a book a few years back about effective parish uh, catechetical practices. and What's been quoted from that book a lot is the need in this time and age to uh, evangelize households, not just catechize children. And that's part of what this is about, is about trying to evangelize households. That is the great mission of the church and our great task today. If we want to go from a maintenance church to a missional church that is vibrant. Um, on your worst days of anxiety and fear here in August, looking forward, there may be a sense of, can we do this? This being be a vibrant parish in the midst of pandemic with regard to mass, with regard to our catechetical programming, with the power of the Holy Spirit imbued within all that we do each day. Yes, we can do this because it will be the Spirit doing it in and through us. You are more talented, you are more able than you may feel in your fearful days uh, because you are gifted by God and because you are inviting the Holy Spirit to work in and through you who you are. All right, Tom. Things are very, very doable here. Father Tom, can you hang on for a second? We're going to go to the Q&A very, very shortly, okay? Okay, because time is, time is on. Time, time, we're at that point. Um, We'll, we'll stay in as long as uh, we need to for any of the questions, okay? Um, the use of catechists was raised, and that's in the chat. That's a very good question. Some of you have a, a whole squadron of catechists. What do you do with them? It's an important consideration. One of the things that I suggest is that you consider keeping the catechists with their group from last year. So if there'll be some sort of digital, digital checking in with the parents, families, you don't need to shuffle the deck. Uh, that would make things easier for this year. Consider how to utilize the gifts of your catechist in a model such as this. We'd like to imagine a sharing forum, a digital platform where your wisdom can be brought into the mix. We do not have all the wisdom here by a long shot. So if you know of a way that we could create in the Diocese of Des Moines, in your diocese, wherever that may be, 
and perhaps some sort of a national forum for the sharing of the wealth of resources and ideas, that could make all of us smarter and all of our programs more effective. So we haven't gotten our heads around a sharing forum for uh, the cross-pollination of good ideas. And finally, uh, for people who are outside the Diocese of Des Moines, I just wanna make mention that we're really not set up to be able to directly manage everyone's needs. So what we're gonna try to do in the coming days and weeks is provide your diocesan catechetical director the information that she or he would need to provide to you. So make your diocesan director your first point of contact uh, for needs information that we have not been able to provide here today and in the last session. And then reach out to us uh, if you reach dead ends and you don't know where to go and you have a need. That would be uh, helpful, I think, if we, if we had everybody going through their own diocesan office, okay? Uh, those were just some comments I had, and unless Paul let or Jenny have anything, it's Q&A time. And Father Tom, why don't you lead us off? Uh, sorry to interrupt in between, but uh, I thought the time is going fast. Quickly, uh, well, thank you for sharing this. Uh, I like the uh, idea of the whole parish and the also the focus on the parents as primary mentors. Quick question is, you know, suppose from Altoona, St. John, Paul Parish, are creating a separate website for the content. How do the families access it? Can they directly access the materials? The, uh, you want to, you want to, Jenny, or do you want me to? I sure can. So our intent is, I mean, technically you could go to our website and look it up and they could find everything there. Um, our hope was that you could either take the newsletter, that newsletter, we're going to create a PDF document um, to send to your parish that you could send out, or you guys could create your own website if that was something that was doable for you. You could even do it in a short Word document if it was easier to put all the links in the sections in there and post that on your website. Um, I would imagine, hopefully, most web uh, churches already have a website, um, but setting up a free Weebly website is pretty easy if you have, um, even if you got a high school kid in your parish that was able to, um, they could probably do it for you in an hour. Um, set it all up there and then really you're just copying and pasting a lot of these links and or uploading a simple document once in a while. Okay, so as far you. as the, yep, so as far as the families accessing it, that's something that each parish is going to have to decide how they will um, deliver that to your parish. Hopefully that helps. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of questions in the chat that I wanted to that I wanted to address. Um, as Jenny mentioned, um, as a follow up today, we can send that document um, that that flyer that Jenny created that kind of talks about the components and what will be shared with parishes. One of the questions in the chat: Do you have a rough lineup of the adult speakers or topics? Um, in the first Zoom, we had three slides in the PowerPoint where we went through the nine months of the year and what the title of the session was and had a real brief excl explanation of um, you know the topic for that month that is also we have that also in a word document and so um, as a follow-up i think uh, tom and tim and jenny i think it'd be a good idea if we sent that as an attachment as a little reminder of what we're going to deal with each month um, we don't have all of those speakers lined up yet um, Tom is, is taking the lead with that and we're brainstorming those. Um, I, I don't know that we'll have a definitive list from September through May. That may be kind of an evolving reality as you know, with people's availability and so forth, but at least we can get the topics out to folks uh, so that you can, you can plan around that. And Paulette, um, so we do have our September person lined up. His name is Mike Patan, it's spelled P, a T I N. He's down in Louisiana and he is a very well known and beloved uh, national presenter. Uh, he did something here at Dowling for the uh, students back last September. And he's a friend of mine and he's funny and deep and smart and gifted in so many ways. And I think your parents, any, anybody who watches him, will be inspired and will laugh. And that's a really great combination for, for starting out. 
And I hope that we can find uh, people of that kind of quality from month to month to pair up with our themes for each month. So we're shooting for quality here that will uh, inspire and uh, foster conversion in the hearts of our adults, our parents. Uh, that's at the heart of evangelization today. And, and I think Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. And we hope to have a message from Mike Patan uh, uh, available soon, and we'll let you know when that's available for your viewing, so you'll get a little sense of Mike uh, soon. Yeah, and and the the luxury uh, the luxury of this model is we can approach uh, some nationally known figures like Mike is, um, and um, you know draw together, say, a 10-minute or a 20-minute video from them far more easily than uh, inviting them to come to the parish and be presenter. I mean, so, so that's a great flexibility that Tom's uh, uh, proving to be very helpful with. We, we will be able to, to invite and involve some national figures that we would not otherwise be able to. Couple other questions in the chat. Um, many of them, uh, others of us have responded to. Um, but a couple other questions were how many side dishes in each category? That will probably vary from month to month, but I would say at least two or three. Um, but you know, one month we might have an embarrassment of riches, and another month we might be kind of having to scratch our heads. But um, there will be, you know, at least a couple of options in each of those age level or demographic categories. And then the family connection side dish, that is more, um, those will be more activities or ideas for multi-age households. You know, maybe a household has, you know, little children and a teenager um, or activities that are not real age specific for a household. I think that, Jenny, if you want to have any clarification of that, but that's, that's kind of what I had in mind with that. As far as the what, I'm sorry. The, the uh, family connection. Oh, yeah. So the family ones was something that the whole family could do or something that involved, like you said, multi-age children or something that wasn't just, um, we've always done, our website has always been for children, for teens, and for adults. Well, some of those activities when we were putting them together involved more than just children or more than just teens or more than just the adults. So as we were doing this virtually this year, we thought it would be nice to have a family connection one. Um, so there, if there were activities um, that involved the whole family or things the whole family could do that weren't just a kindergarten activity or weren't just a high school activity that we could put them in the family section so that um, if you happen to have a family that only had teens and you only opened the teen section, you didn't miss some of those other activities that might be um, for the broader household. One last question in the chat that I, at least that I see so far, and if I've missed some folks jump in, but um, there was a question about the youth ministry offerings. So we have other part-time staff who work with youth ministry who were not able to be, um, you know, in this uh, conversation with us, but we draw from Life Teen um, and Edge, uh, we draw from Youth Ministry Access uh, and some other sources and those folks plan and provide that programming. So um, we don't, I, I can't really speak to specifics, but those are the types of, um, you know, again, resources that they draw from in their planning. And um, really, you know, those youth ministry gatherings are meant to meet the goals of youth ministry. Um, and, and to be a, maybe a little bit lighter um, and more fun, although we think our faith formation is pretty light and fun too. Mm -hmm. um, and, but to provide also some, some more peer action for the kids. Uh, so uh, that, I hope that gives a little bit of an answer to that question. We're at the hour 15-ish minute, minute mark. So what I'd like to suggest is that I think the team is committed to staying on for questions for whoever has any. So, but we wanna be respectful of time. So 75 minutes is a good length for the basic uh, session today. Again, I wanna reinforce that for those of us in the Diocese of Des Moines, we have it easy. We're gonna be able to communicate and get things out to you as, as they unfold in the coming days and weeks, and you know how to reach us, so that's easy. If you're outside the Diocese of Des Moines, I don't mean to make work for, for your diocesan office, but I'll communicate with your director 
to make sure they're in the know so that you always have uh, uh, the information you need to proceed with this. And you can reach out to us uh, as needed uh, if, if that's not an option for you. Uh, we're so thrilled that you took the time. And if you do nothing with this in terms of plugging into our components, we hope that this, uh, this two-part uh, series, and, and if you didn't watch the first one, uh, let's find you the link so you can watch the first session as well, uh, furthers the cause of family intergenerational faith formation in our nation. Uh, it, it is the right direction to be leaning into more and more, and technology allows us to do it easily and cheaply uh, in a way that we couldn't have even imagined 15 years ago. So God has blessed us. This is absolutely a direction we should be going in, pandemic or not. And perhaps God has offered us, as Tim said, an opportunity to lean into, to dive into grace, the grace of this model of formation and evangelization that we might not have otherwise. We might have just said, steady as she goes, let's not change what's not broken. Well, I'm not sure the schooling model isn't a little bit broken. And this is a model that offers a lot of hope for the future vibrancy of families and of the church. So with that, we're gonna pivot back to questions from you. And if, if you wanna step out and, and say goodbye to us, thank you for your time. We ask for your prayers and we'll find a way to, to receive your wisdom as we try to share what we have. God bless you, thank you. And don't be fearful, the Holy Spirit is with you. Before everybody signs off, Tom, uh, Paulette, it might be helpful to remind people where they can access these two recorded sessions. We will send the link. So the link to the first session has been sent and we'll send a link because the recording is in the cloud. Good, good. I thought we had emails at the beginning, but they aren't, sorry. <laughs> they were at the end, unless we dropped off. Oh, that's where it was. There it is. Wrong way. Okay. That's how you reach us. Stay on for more questions. We'd love to hear more otherwise, and, and leave as you wish. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll give you a minute to think of something because <laughs> you know you're going to sign off and say, oh, I wish I'd asked that. Actually, I have a question for any of you three or anyone else who's on with us still. My question goes a little deeper with how to continue to involve our catechists. I know, you know, there are some for sure who would feel a great loss in their lives if they couldn't continue to connect with the children and families. And they are so skilled at connecting and sharing the faith. I don't wanna lose that um, if we switch you know, models of delivery. So I welcome your thoughts. Real quick, Jane Ann, I, I welcome your thoughts. So I want you to prayerfully reflect upon that because you have a program with catechists the folks at St. John and Paul, it's a little different. So um, we, I think we wanna rely on the wisdom of those of you who have uh, maybe a more of a traditional model to get your heads around how you could uh, utilize the gifts of your catechists. We don't want them uh, uh, sidelined necessarily. Um, one thought as somebody who ran a traditional program a couple decades ago, um, Perhaps there's a way digitally they can be the facilitators, the shepherds of a group of families and be, be a small community uh, group leader. Uh, the thing that I think we need to get our heads around and with the help of John Gaffney and the diocese, what are the protocols that we need to abide by in terms of digital communication that include children, minors? Uh, so we have to be careful of that. Um, but there are certainly ways in which uh, catechists can be connecting with our, our, our people in a way that feels like accompaniment. We hear Pope uh, Francis talking about uh, how disciples accompany people into faith. 
I think that's the role I imagined for catechists this year as the companiers of, of a small community of families. I have a thought on that. Um, one of my thoughts is this, that if we do something with a Zoom model, we can create those breakout rooms that are age specific and engage our catechists as the facilitators of conversation within those age specific groupings. Mm -hmm. Kids and those age specific groupings could be multi ages. So uh, grades one and two, grades three and four. So there would be two adults present in a session with all of those kiddos of, of that particular age group that might be plugging in at any given time. That way you've still got that nurturing sense and presence of those catechists who are good at communicating and community building with that age group while it's still connected to a larger process where there's some oversight that the host and co-host of the session can be popping in to double check and make sure things are kosher. Great idea. Yes. Yeah, and a couple other ideas that um, we hope to use this year too is um, some of those learning things that we will post on the playlist um, instead of um, a lot of times there'll be links or resources to other things, but we also wanted that connection with our kids. So instead of me maybe doing a learning video every month, I'm, I'm going to ask some of my catechists that are good at that so the kids can see different people's faces. And that means there's different learning models and different um, different ways to present things. Just um, our children, we have children's liturgy on the Word up Sundays and four of us have been taking turns making a video each Sunday because we're not currently doing it during Mass. Um, but there are four different learning models. I sit outside in the garden and tell a story. Janet stands in the classroom and tells her story. Um, Joellen does it on her computer with this app called Loom. So she's in the corner, her little face is talking, and she has a slideshow. So it's really neat because there's four different, um, and then Christina's has a lot more music and stuff. So it's really neat because there's different, the kids see, they see us, but they also have a different model of delivery from each of them. So I'm hoping to involve our catechists some this year. Um, so that they can be some of those presenters or share some of those ideas or sing a song. I mean, we have one, I mean, every parish has wonderful resources, but we have some that have sign language gifts, that we have some that are singer, you know, there's different ways that we can use them, that we can share those gifts virtually this year. So we're hoping to do with that. And I was thinking during this session too, um, we will, as most of you will, have new families that this whole intergenerational faith formation model is going to be way over their heads to begin with, and now we're doing it all online. Um, so maybe having some of my veteran catechists, um, like you said, Cheryl, check, um, make small groups and check in with those new families. Okay, what are you lost at? What are you questions do you have? Where can we help you? Or um, so some of those things, or if I can figure out, we have pr a pretty large geographical area, but if I can figure out neighborhood families that if I know they're close to another neighbor pairing those families together so they have somebody to ask those questions to and learn from. Jenny, I think the idea of tapping the catechists for little videos is, is perfect. Um, I know we're, we have a CGS process here at St. Pius X, and we're not yeah. going to do CGS this year because yeah. of space constraints with, with everything. So right. one of my plans is to engage those catechists in speaking for a minute or two about a pertinent topic that would be uh, coming up within the atrium itself and tie that to the, the larger parish life issue yeah. so that the families that are CGS families are still hearing from those catechists and still being infused a little bit with the spirit of the atrium at the same the time. atrium. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I just had another, one other question about sacramental preparation. Um, a lot of the things we do at our parishes is very similar, um, but I'm wondering, um, especially with our more remote learning this year, do you um, put the onus on the parents for that formation? Is there, are there check-in points with the catechist to see, or, or you to see if parents maybe need a little um, support to continue working with their child I just kind of wondered, you know, how you do that. It's probably individual, you know, by family, but. 
Your yeah, back. so we yeah, we typically meet and I'm I'm still holding out hope that um with my first communion families we can meet in some respects because it's nice to see their faces and do that. Um so I don't I'm I'm still holding out hope that I can meet with those families and maybe it will be in a couple small groups as opposed to the one or two large groups this year. Um but if we have to do all virtual, uh, yeah, Jane Ann, I'm with you. I'm trying to figure out how to check in with them and see where they're at and what questions they have and where they've been through. So I don't have a good answer for that one yet either. I'm still holding out hope we can meet with them and I can see their faces because you as a teacher know I, you know, I can gauge your understanding if I can see you and if I don't see you then I don't know. So if we can't meet, I guess we'll decide how to do that. <laughs> You may want to in, engage catechists, uh, some of some of your catechists, in a sense for um, you know for regular contact with um, with with the household, um, you know, both for the sake of the children that they would have worked with, you know, on site, but also for the sake of parents. I mean, the catechists may become kind of, um, for lack of a better word, morale officers if you will, um, with, with the parents um, and um, inquiring about, you know, in a sense, kind of helping to coach the parents in this new and unfamiliar role uh, for some of them. Uh, what resources do they need? Um, you know, what, what would help them along, but, but also for some online conversation with child and parents both i mean the catechist could be a good um coach and um uh, um you know kind of um aid i think for for some household conversation and helping parents to see how they could expand their role as conversation starters and uh, participants you know i think good catechists like you said uh, jane ann are are uh, an invaluable resource. And so think of new and different ways to engage them even online um, with a household at a time or with a cluster of households. Not, 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 not every household, not every parent is gonna be comfortable with, with, with this model and with kind of heightened expectations on, on their articulation and, and um, you know, comfort with, with, with talking about faith and with and so forth and so on. But it's a wonderful moment to coach these folks into an expanded um, expectation uh, of their role, yeah. It's it's a learning experience for a lot of for a lot of adults. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I um, along with that, not not to monopolize, but along with that, I was um, I got to attend a webinar from the Augustine Institute regarding their faith formation for first reconciliation and Eucharist, and it. So I'm wondering if anyone else has used it because it seemed very appealing to me in particular in our current situation, it is set up for parents to teach their children. And, you know, there are little videos that help them through that as they go through, you know, each lesson. And if a parent doesn't feel comfortable teaching, they actually have recordings of a very talented catechist who shares that information the lesson part, and then the parent and child are left to talk about it, but the parent doesn't have to be the teacher per se. So anyway, I just wondered if anyone else had used that program. And um, hey, Jane Ann, yes, I, I'm, I've not experienced it directly, and I'm, I'm seeing some heads shake. No, uh, yeah. here's the one thing I'd I'd say to what you shared about the vision of this program. Um, it may be very good in terms of helping parents pass on the faith uh, regarding these sacraments to their children. But from my perspective, the mistake that family, family formation made from the beginning was to have a vision of 
help your children learn their stuff. <laughs> that is, is insufficient because we have parents who, it's, and it's not even a matter of parents don't know their stuff. It runs deeper than that. We have parents that don't know Jesus, parents who have not been evangelized, parents who do not have a, a relationship with God that's living and vibrant and are in need of conversion. So we must do more than simply help our parents help their kids learn their stuff. That isn't getting it done. We need to foster conversion in adult hearts. So whatever you use, uh, please make sure that that element or that dimension is part of it. And I'm, I, I hope I'm not overstating things here, but it is my intention to provide by some means uh, parent formation in this genre uh, digitally for our parishes to utilize as they wish in, in preparations for reconciliation and first Eucharist. Uh -huh. So it's something I've done for 20 years with parents in the Chicagoland area and I'm, I'm very passionate about sacramental formation that evangelizes. And so I'll, I'll be doing something uh, to uh, uh, assist you in terms of resourcing in this regard. Uh, Deacon uh, Jacob, I see you've had your hand up. Yes, I did. Um, thank you. I know that, uh, you know, this is new for a lot of the parishes here, and it's not new uh, in Altoona. And so I was wondering, as you've been talking about, that there's a lot of parents who, um, you know, we see a, a lot of parents dropping their kids off for faith formation. But um, like you said, I mean, of course, we can't see their their souls, but you might suspect based on what we can see that maybe there's a real lack of engagement with the faith, with the Lord. Um, how have you found, you know, the willingness of, of parents and families to engage with this style of, uh, of faith formation? And how have you found ways to encourage people that this is going to be a good thing for their family, that it's something they want to do? I think I see that especially relevant now, and I think a lot of people feel like they've got a lot on their plate, and now this might be perceived as us adding another thing that they've got to get done, you know. Um, what kind of messaging maybe have you found helpful to help people engage with this? Well, I'll, I'll jump in, I guess. Um, you know, it's, it, the, it's been it's received mixed reviews. Let's put it that way. Um, I haven't been here the whole. None of us have been here the whole 17 years, um, but um, it it is a paradigm shift and it takes some time. And um, you know, of course, it was begun here deliberately. I mean, it was a choice that the pastor and the staff made. Whereas this year, circumstances are are kind of driving us in that direction. So maybe. It gives us a little bit of, I don't want to say an excuse, but I mean, it, it compels us to think of, of different ways of doing this. Um, you know, we've, we've had some people who've changed. I'll take the excuse. That's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> I mean, we've had some people who've changed parishes. We have people who've embraced it wholeheartedly. We have people who tolerate it. Um, we have people who I, I feel have, have had a change of heart, you know, who were maybe reluctant or this, you know, kind of, begrudgingly went along with this so that their child could, this is their language, get their sacrament or, you know, whatever, um, who have, who have come to really, you know, appreciate it. And we're even now this many years in starting to have a taste of a, of another generation, you know, of, of folks and, and families and households who, who not known anything different. And then of course, every year we have families who move in, who've never heard of such a thing. And that's where, you know, Jenny mentioned some of the mentoring and partnering with other households and so forth. Um, one of the things, one of our goals with, with this year, with this approach, and Jenny has been a really strong voice and advocate for parents in this, um, you know, as, as a mom of four kids, um, this, this whole situation is so overwhelming for households of all configurations. And so it, it is our goal and our commitment to try to keep this as realistic and doable for parents as possible. And so to, to, you know, we're really trying not to make this another thing to feel discouraged about or intimidated by, 
and that's why we wanted to try to keep it keep it light and joyful because hopefully our faith is a joyful thing but also not um an excessive burden on people that's our goal and and we'll see how we do with it but um that's part part of our our very deliberate planning so I you think using the menu uh metaphor which i think is so cool uh we want this to taste good but, but we don't want it to be empty calories at the same time so how do we strike the balance of rich fare that brings value and meaning to their lives so that uh, but it's also fun so that um, they want this. It's not another thing they have to do. It's something they look forward to because it's bringing value, meaning, a sense of purpose. Um, uh, Mike Patan, I think, is a great first uh, out of the box guy because he will be funny, he will be engaging. And I think people will leave saying, from that session, and I think from the whole session for September that's being designed, you know what, that was good. And, and, I, and, and I, as a parent, got something out of it. It just wasn't about only the kids. And, and I, I, would, I would just say, it, it's, uh, uh, Jake, that's a, a good question. And like Paulette said, um, there, there are some households that just will not tie into this, um, just have not tied into it. But I think a, a long-term strategy with this and that we try to a act out of is to keep saying to ourselves, you know, faith formation and the ways of faith and the language of faith um, are not an extra layer of skin that we want to uh, lay on everybody, you know, um, but rather we, we try to start close to the ground and, and see the grace that is already present, you know, and the, the encounter with grace as the ordinary experience of life, not, not the extraordinary or, or out of body experience. And, and so that really drives us. It, we try to stick real close with that disposition, even in the language of this model that we're using. I mean, we talk about kitchen table grace, if you will, you know, and we start with the life of the household, if you will, and then, uh, you know, kind of postulate from that, but don't approach faith formation as, you know, this extra layer of skin. It's much more integral to our lives than, than that. And that's a real shift for a lot of people. I mean, I think there are a lot of adults um, who come to this whole enterprise out of that disposition of, um, you know, a grace as supernatural, but never Woven, woven into our lives and never present in our household and, and never shared at the kitchen table, only at church, you know? And so we keep trying to remind ourselves, stay close to the ground, stay close to the ground. That's where we start. Mm 